Okay, in the next part of the lecture, we are going to see um, what an initial value problem is. So very often, so as, as you already know, um, differential equations have infinitely many solutions. So if you have a different first order differential equation, then it's going to have uh, its general solution is going to have something like plus C, where C can be any constant, right? So which essentially means that it has infinitely many solutions. Now, but usually we are not, we don't really want to know those infinitely many solutions. And instead we usually are interested in just one solution that satisfies a certain initial condition, right? So it means that we are given a specific value of uh, X and to that specific value of X, um, it corresponds a specific value of Y, right? So here are a few examples, right? So if um, in, in, in in the first example, for example, if X is, is zero, right? So if X is zero, then this is zero, then Y is 0 0.05, right? So it means that, you know, uh, we, we don't really care about all possible solutions, but if the, this differential equation probably describes some process where um, Y is a function of, of, of X, right? And we know that it's first derivative is proportional to y itself and specifically the 0.15 times y itself. And at the same time, we know that if say x is time, so we know that the initial value of y, so when x is zero is 0 0.05, something like that, right? So an initial condition always tells you that um, at some, some given point, uh, so some, some given, uh, for some given value of the independent variable. So you, you, you are given some, some value of the dependent variable, right? So, and the initial value problem, it consists of a differential equation and an initial condition, right? So how do we um, uh, solve a differential equation and, well, how do we solve an initial value problem? So here is an example. Now, um, so th this is a familiar differential equation. So I have already solved it. So let me just quickly do it, do it again. So uh, separating the variables, I'm going to get three y square dy equals cos n x dx. Then I'm going to integrate and integrating, I, I will get y cube equals uh, sine x plus c. Now I can use the, this initial condition to find this uh, C, right? So pi over two. So here pi over two is, is X and minus four is Y, right? So it, it means that I'm going to substitute uh, pi over two um, for X and I'm going to substitute negative four for Y. And doing that, I'm going to get negative four cube equals sine of pi over two plus C. Right, uh, sine of pi over two is, is, is just really one. Yeah, one, so it is one plus C. And negative four cubed is, is really negative uh, 64, right? So uh, I just got the, the equation for C, negative 64 equals one plus C and solving for C, I get C equals negative uh, 65, right? So basically now I can plug it in back to the equation and doing that I will get Y cubed equals sine x uh, minus 65. And now solving for y, I get y is cube root of sine x minus 65. Now, so not just that, um, instead of finding c, you know, right from, from the start, I could instead at, you know, at the, the, at the stage when uh, I obtained the, this uh, equation on, on y and x. So right after integration, I could first solve for y. Now, in my experience, it is usually uh, easier to find c first, right? So, I mean, if you have a choice, like either find c or solve for y, right? So what you do is you find c first. It, it, it's just easier. So, I mean, Practice shows that sometimes it doesn't matter. So it is never really easier to solve for Y. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes it matters. So I, I know uh, some extreme examples when you will not even be able to, uh, uh, 
to to solve for y and then find c because of some tricky kind of, um, tricky effects with uh, with rational powers. So I know a differential equation where there is y raised to the power two thirds or something like that. And then, you know, if you try to do that, it, it really, um, so if you find C first, it, it works, but if you try to solve for Y first, then it doesn't work. Okay, so it, it's better to, to solve to, to find C first. Well, in, 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 in this particular case, it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. All right, uh, so which is why, you know, in my printed solution, I solve for Y first and then find C. But <laughs> sometimes, I mean, again, so in in, 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 in this case, it, it doesn't really matter, but sometimes it does. Okay, so um, here is another, my, another example. And again, so this is a familiar differential equation. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just uh, write the uh, solution of the differential equation that I already derived in the previous part. So I'm not going to repeat it. So, and the solution of that differential equation is y plus y cubed over three equals x times sine x plus cosine x plus constant, right? So this is an implicit solution. Now, uh, I also have the, this initial condition. So my initial value of x is zero and my initial value of y is, is one. So it means that in order to, to find C, I'm going to uh, substitute one for Y and zero for X. So doing that, I will get one plus one cube over three equals zero times sine zero plus cosine of zero plus constant, right? So this is essentially um, zero, cosine zero is, is one. I guess one cancels out, so my constant is one third. So solving for C, I get one third. So which really means that the solution to my differential equation is this. Now, if you want, I don't know, if you don't like um, fractional numbers, then, then you can probably multiply by three and my multiplying by three, you will get three uh, Y plus Y cubed equals three times X cosine, sorry, sine x, cosine. Um, sine x plus cosine x plus one. So if, if you want, you, you can kind of change it to, to, to that way, but it, it is not necessary. All right, so yeah, so here is in, in the printed solution that they, they did that. But you, you don't have to, generally speaking, you don't have to. 